The ecology section in the Leaving Cert Biology course is hugely significant and you are guaranteed to find questions in Section A, Section B and Section C of your paper. Section A is mostly likely going to be definitions and also some questions connected to the study of an ecosystem as is section B the study of an ecosystem. Section C is going to be long questions possibly a comprehension. So for this video let's concentrate on qualitative and quantitative analysis just because they appear quite often on the paper and you've actually conducted both types when you did your study of an ecosystem. Firstly, let's look at qualitative analysis. We are looking for the presence or absence of particular organisms. So you're checking the variety of animal life, fauna and plant life, flora, in your ecosystem and you're making a record of everything you find. Very simply, qualitative analysis is identifying all the plants and all the animals in your ecosystem and you're going to do this by means of using keys. The identification of the plants was quite easy because they don't move about much. However, when it came to the fauna, which was mostly insects in our case, we needed key pieces of equipment in order to catch them. So we used sweep nets, beating trays, pooters, pitfall traps, cryptozoic traps and sometimes mammal traps can be used too. So next it's quantitative analysis, which is basically dealing with numbers. It's giving us an indication of the numbers of particular organisms present in the ecosystem and there are various ways of doing this and we'll go into each one of them separately. The first method of quantitative analysis is determining frequency. This is the chances of finding a name species when you throw a quadrat. For example, it could be the chances of finding dandelion in your particular area that you're studying when you throw the quadrat and it's usually represented as a percentage. An essential tool needed to measure frequency or to determine frequency is the quadrat. It's basically a square frame and the one we used was 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters. To determine the frequency of a named species, firstly mark the area for study. Select the species that you want to study. For example, it could be dandelion, creeping buttercup. Throw a pen at random, usually over your shoulder, and that's to avoid bias. Place the quadrat then gently over the pen wherever it is landed. Tick if the organism is present in your table. Calculate and then graph your results. So this is an example of a table that you could produce if you were determining the frequency of a named species, for example, creeping buttercup. You can see here in the table that on the first, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the eighth and the ninth row of the quadrat, creeping buttercup was present. That's six out of 10, 60% frequency. The second type of quantitative study is percentage cover. This is basically determining the area of the ground covered by the aerial parts of a named species of plant. Or in other words, it's the area of the ground covered by a species of plant. Determining percentage cover means using a different type of quadrat. This is called a grid quadrat and you can see that it's divided, our one here is divided into 25 squares. It measures 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters and basically this grid is divided into hits. We said that every top left hand corner was a hit. So you count the number of hits in total in that quadrat and you're going to throw that quadrat 10 times. So in total we had 250 possible hits. With the grid quadrat now in position, get a pen and place it through the top left hand corner of each of those small squares. If it touches the name species, well then it's a hit and you record this. Let's go through that procedure one last time. So mark off the area that you wish to study. Make sure you select and name the plant that you wish to study. Throw a pen at random over your shoulder. This is to ensure there's no bias. Place the quadrat over the pen and into the top left hand corner of each box you're going to put the pen. If the named plant is touched by that pen, well then it's a hit. You repeat this for 10 throws. You put your results in a table, calculate and then graph. So this is a possible table that you could generate if you were doing percentage cover. Let's take a look at the first plant, Creeping Buttercup. You can see that there are 10 columns that are going to represent each of those 10 throws of the quadrat. You can see that the numbers of hits have been placed into each of those. You can also see that there was a total of 78 hits out of a possible 250. So that gives us 31.2% coverage. So just to remind you that two classic omissions in these questions are students forget to state what the name of the ecosystem was that they're now discussing and they also forget to name the species. It could be a plant or it could be an animal if you're talking about capture recapture. Make sure you read the question carefully and write these down. How would you do a quantitative analysis for animals that move about a lot? Well, the method that we learn is capture recapture.
You could employ the capture-recapture method if you wanted to determine the snail population in your grassland. So, on the first night, we capture as many snails as possible. A record is kept of the number of snails that were caught and each of those snails is then marked in some way, usually with a type of paint that won't hurt them and won't make them conspicuous to their predators. So those marked snails are then released and set free back into the wild and a few days later you set about trying to catch more snails. You take a note of the total number you managed to catch and you also take a note of any of those original marked snails that are in this new cohort. So then you just use this formula to calculate the population of snails. So you're going to put down the number caught on the first night, multiply it by the number caught on the second night and divide your answer by the number caught on the second time that had the marking. What are the possible errors that you could encounter or you could make when you're doing these qualitative and quantitative analyses and indeed the whole study of the ecosystem? Well, a classic one would be misidentifying a plant or an animal. So using the key incorrectly and this will throw your results way off. A second one is miscalculating. A third one is using equipment incorrectly. And a fourth one possibly is picking an area that's just too small and not representative of the true ecosystem. So please remember that this is only a summary video covering some aspects of qualitative and quantitative analysis. Please revise line transects now in your book and all the other aspects of ecology as they are guaranteed to be on your exam. This video was made using icons, the following icons from the NAM project. I'm a pro member, but I still want to credit the artists. Leaving Surf Biology 2018 is tomorrow afternoon. The very best of luck to you all sitting your exam tomorrow. It'll be fine. And when it's over, it's over. Forget about it and move on. To my particular class, best of luck, girls. I'll be thinking of you and know it'll be fine.